I am Rambam Sefer Mizvot. Mizvot Ase Positive Commandments. We're up to Mizvah Nun Zayin. We're up to 57. Yesterday we spoke about both the Mizvah slaughtering the Korban Pesach on the 14th of Nisan and the Mizvah of eating the meat of the Korban Pesach that night, which is the night of the 15th, the first night of the holiday of Pesach. And uh, the Rambam spent a while discussing uh, the idea that Masa Maror is eaten with Korban Pesach, but Maror per se is not an independent positive commandment. It's part of the command of Korban Pesach, and the obligation is only, therefore, when you're eating Korban Pesach. And when you're eating Maror independently, like we do in our days, it's only a rabbinical command. So Mizvah Nun Zayin number 57. Hisha Sivanu Lushot HaPesach HaSheni so there's a positive commandment to slaughter what's called the second Kodban Pesach. He who literally means prevented from him or um, had a some reason beyond his control that he was not able to slaughter and, of course, offer the first Kodban Pesach, Pesach Harishon, now we'll call it. In other words, during its proper time of slaughtering and offering, which is the 14th of Nisan. The Torah, the Rambam here doesn't mention, but the Torah says if the person was either at a distance um, from Yerushalayim at that time, and for good reason, and he couldn't get back, or the person was Tameh, he had uh, exposure, let's say, to a deceased, and then required the seven days to become pure, and it was within seven days that it occurred of the 14th of Nisan. In those situations, that person is exempt from the first Pesach and has to bring what's called Pesach Sheni, make up Korban. The uh, questioner, that may be you. I'm sorry, the, the source first. For whom the Pasuk is, the Chodesh HaSheni Ben HaArbaim Ya'asuotot. The Torah gives us a date the second month, which is the second month of the year, which is the month of Iyar, um, in the same day, which is the 14th, in the same time, which is the afternoon, Ben Ha'arbaim, that's when you offer this. Uh, now he says, someone might challenge Allah me and say, why, Mr. Rambam, are you counting second Pesach offering as an independent Mizvah? This contradicts the seventh principle that I discussed. He's, he's like he's, he's talking to himself um, in the in the in the introduction, and that is that a segment, a component of a mizvah, so to speak, should not be counted as an independent mizvah. So it would seem. This Pesach Shani is only a makeup for the first Pesach. It's born out of the act, original Korban Pesach. Why are we enumerating it independently? That's what you might challenge me on, says the Rambam. So whoever asks this question needs to know. There was a dispute among our scholars. Is it the, the laws that apply? Is it like the first? Or is it independent command, um, dependent of the first Pesach? And the decision was made in the Gemara that it's an independent command given to Moshe and Israel. And that's why I counted independently as an independent Mizvah. There's a three-way mahlok in the Gemara, in the Beraita, whether, what the punishment is, what the consequences are for not offering these korbanot. The first opinion of Rabbi, Rabbi Yudan I see, is that if you don't offer the first Pesach, it's karet, as we've discussed. And on the second, well, in other words, you had the opportunity, you were supposed to, then offer the second one, it's also karet. The binatan omer, hayav karet al harishon, upatul al hasheni. 
The Binatan says the punishment of Kareh would only be on the first, not on the, not on the lack of offering the second. The Omer, Af al Eno Hayav. The third Tana says that you, in a situation where you had the opportunity to offer the second one, you're not liable for Kareh on either one. In other words, unless you didn't do the second. In other words, the second is the makeup of the first, according to the third opinion. And that, therefore, the first Pesach itself, never are you liable for karet unless we wait for and then see that you didn't offer the second. And now, in retrospect, you're liable karet for the first. So you have three different opinions. Karet on both, when you bring a Korban Pesach Shini, and you didn't bring it. Uh, karet on neither, or karet only on the second uh, only on the first when you didn't bring the second. Bishal Hatamud Vaamar Bemaika Mefalge. So the um, Gemara asked, what's really behind, what fundamental ideas behind this dispute of the three Hachamim? Rabbi Savar Regal Bafne Asmohu, Rav Rabbi Natan Savar Tashtumeri Shonu. He says, what's behind this dispute is as to whether or not Pesah Sheni is viewed as a holiday in and of itself. And that argument triggers the other argument regarding the punishment of kare. Now, what do I get out of all this, says the Rambam? So now we've discussed that, that's what, that which we're building up to. And there in the Gemara, they said, therefore, is their conclusion in the Gemara, if you purposely violated both korbanot, you gave neither bezadon intentionally. All three opinions agree that you'd be liable for karet on both. If on both you forgot it was pesach, let's say, then you're not liable on either one. The, 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 the dispute is in the situation where in the first one you purposely missed, and the second one, you forgot it was the day. Let it be Hayab, according to the Buddha and Asi, uh, since it's an independent holiday, you're liable. Will it be Natan, Hayab, also the second opinion, would be Hanayab, the third opinion would say, that's when you're exempt on the third one, because it is not an independent holiday. And also, if you were intent on the... Uh, uh, you intentionally didn't bring on the first and you brought on the second to make it up, according to the first opinion of the B, you're obligated. Because you can't make up a wrongdoing when you did it with intent. In any case, the halakha is like Rabbi Yudanasi, which means you can get karet for each one. But the main thing that teaches us is that his opinion was based upon and founded upon the idea that Pesach Sheni is the regal b'fnas more, that it's an independent holiday. And therefore, the Rambam built his case, based on that conclusion, that we can name and list Pesach Sheni as a separate mizvah. That was what this whole exercise was about. V'zot ha-mizvah en ha-nashim hayavot ba women are exempt from Pesach Sheni, sh'kvad hit ba'el sham sh'isha b'sheni reshut. Even though she's obligated in the first, the Gemara explained why she's exempt in the second. Um, and um, the rest of the halakhot can be found in Masechet Pesachim. Mizvah nun number 58. Noah. basar hamish asar mi'yar amasal maroz. Now, the previous Mizvah was slaughtering and offering the second Pesach Korban when appropriate. This Mizvah, which is listed as a Sabra Mizvah, is to eat that night, that the 15th of Iyar, a month later, to eat the flesh of that Korban with Masa and Maror, even though, of course, it's not the, the holiday, actual holiday of Pesach, you have to be eating with Masa and Maror. Umro, the, the source is Amasot Umro it says that very same phrase that was mentioned in the first Pesach, in the second Pesach, 
find the rest of the details in tractate Pesachim. But just like the women are exempt from offering the second one, they're, all, they're exempt from uh, eating it. So therefore, just like the previous is not an obligation, so too this one is not an obligation. Now, what's unique about the eating obligation of Pesach Sheni is that there's no restriction of Hamas. And that's the way the Halakha describes it. That on one hand, you're having, you have pizza in one hand, <laughs> and you have masa maror and pesa sheni in the other hand. Okay. Absolutely, there's no restriction of hames on pesa sheni. The, the Torah mentioned nothing of the of the, of the sort, and therefore all you have is the positive without the negative, and that seems bizarre to us. But when pesa sheni was offered, that's the law. Okay, well, let's go into the next one. Mizvan Nun Ted number 59. So we did a nice job. We're still in the Korbanot realm. Um, in general, we went into Pesach because Pesach, Pesach is unique. So the Rambam saved the Pesach offering for the end of the, all the holiday offerings. And um, now the Rambam will go into, he has more offerings to talk about, but he's going to go into um, we can call it accessory misvot in the Beta Mikdash that revolve or are connected to the misvot of Korbanot. So number 59 noted. So company with the offerings, uh, Korban Musaf offerings of the holidays, there's a misvot aseh to blow the trumpets in the Beit HaMikdash. What's the source? So it says on the days of your rejoicing, it's the holidays, as you blow the, show, the trumpet, when the Qurban's being offered, it's very explicit in the Torah. Right, so it's not a, there's two types of sounding offs of instruments in the Beit HaMikdash. One's shofar, and the other is the trumpet, those long silver trumpets. This particularly, the, the uh, Gemara Tzrash Ba'abeh teaches us, is with the trumpets. In the Midrash, in two Masechtot of Gemara, there's other times that I have a Mizvat Aseh, and we'll incorporate it in this same Mizvah, uh, an expectation to blow the trumpets. And that is times of need, times of trouble, when we call out to Hashem. Now we know, that has to do with when there's a lack of rain, when we're being attacked by the enemy. Um, and the sources in Parashat Ba'alotecha, which is the same source as the general Mizvah. It says there in the Torah uh, that when uh, war chances upon you uh, by your enemy, and there it says, you blow Ba'azoserot. And the same, so too, we know in other situations of sarah, sara, trouble, um, we have that obligation. Um, and that includes, as I said, lack of rain, et cetera. When hachamim know that this is a dire time of dire need, the positive commandment kicks in. And that is with your prayer comes the blowing of the hasoserot. This is a mezvah that doesn't uh, really come into play anymore these days that we don't usually use the Hasir Sirot when we don't have a better Mekdash. Um, okay, we'll stop here. Amen, amen. On this last